Welcome to Why I Hate Your Podcast. These days, there are a lot of podcasts to choose from. This is another one. I'm Crystal, and each week my brother Sean and I meet up to talk about two podcasts and why we hate them, or don't. Join us and we might help you find your new favorite podcast, or save you from wasting time on a podcast you might hate. So our first podcast today is The Wind Down. Um, And so this is one that neither of us have been listening to prior to listening to it specifically for the purpose of reviewing it. Um, So I did a little bit of research and this podcast is hosted by Jana Kramer, who is uh, an actress. She was, I think her most notable role was a recurring role on One Tree Hill. Uh, She's also a country music star. She's got a couple of albums. And I think she was a really popular contestant on Dancing with the Stars. Um, And then I think the podcast started out with her hosting it. And then she brought in her husband, Michael Cosan or Cosan. I don't know how to pronounce it. Cosan. Um, And from what I gather, he's kind of a he briefly played professional football in the NFL. And I can't really find out much more on him. And so it's a podcast that's basically kind of a slice of life podcast where she talks about marriage and relationships and sex and uh, parenting and all that kind of thing. And I should note it's called Wind Down, but it's spelled W-H-I-N-E, which I think is important to note because it's uh, a little indicative of what the podcast is about. Um, And so I decided to, when I went into this one, I decided to look up, quote unquote, the best episodes, i.e., the most listened to top three episodes. Um, And that's how I picked the episodes to listen to. And uh, I should note going into this that me personally, I don't like reality shows. I don't like like celebrity gossip. I don't follow like TMZ. I don't get into relationship drama among celebrities. And so this, this podcast is not for me. Like I'm not the target audience for this podcast, clearly. Um, So that's going to impact my perspective on it a little bit. And I suspect you're kind of in the same boat. I'm guessing this isn't one that would be up your alley. Yeah, I'm not one for the celebrity culture thing where um, where people like I one, I don't keep up with country music or reality TV. So I have no idea who this uh, Jana person is. And I don't keep up with football. So I have no idea who her husband is. And, you know, we have kind of a culture where people care about what celebrities have to say, even though when they're speaking of stuff outside of their area of expertise, like if she wants to opine about country music, different story. And same thing about him. If he wants to opine about football, different story. But them just opining about life in general, why should I care? Well, and frankly, a lot of their opining that I've gathered from the three episodes I listened to, plus I did dip into the most recent episode just to see if there had been any significant changes. Um, It sounds like a lot of it's discussion about marriage and relationships, which frankly, from the sound of things, it's not going so well for them. Yeah. So, um, and just for the record, so I did look up the top three episodes and the, the highest ranked in terms of listenership was one called, and I should note, they started out numbering their episodes and then they moved into just changing them to like episode names so the the highest ranked one's called i don't want to be here right now and then episode one and two are the second and third top ranked so i have a feeling that it's mainly Jana's fans that started out as the the main base of her listenership and then this one that i don't want to be here right now is specifically a very salacious episode that like there was related stuff in the news about them and celebrity gossip you know columns about them at that time so i think that's why that one was highly rated so it kind of gives you a feel for what the uh what the whole point of the podcast is or at least what gets people listening well and and i listened to it i I chose episodes at random right and there i I'll be honest, I could only get through like one and a half of them. <laughs> well, let me phrase that. <laughs> I almost got to the end of the second one. Uh, and I'll explain why I was just like, I can't do this anymore. But it, just from that a little bit of time, uh, I, I realized that their relationship is definitely somewhat dysfunctional. And I don't know who to say is the instigator of the dysfunction. It, it may be both of them are. 
uh, the, the one episode I watched, which was Man Period, uh, her husband spends a significant portion, like maybe the first 15 minutes of the podcast, kind of opening himself up and being apologetic for the things that he's done, that he feels bad about. He didn't say anything specific. It was just, you know, I've done terrible things. I'm sorry for this, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, oh, I appreciate that. And then immediately, one and a half seconds later, moves on to the next topic of, so how's your man period? <laughs> like, <laughs> this guy just poured out his heart. And she's like, oh, thank you. Well, how's your man period? And I was like, well, <sighs> this seemed really personal and everything, and which is fine. But it just that transition was just kind of jarring. So I'll give you a little more context because the whole them being vulnerable and talking about and being open about themselves and things that they've done in the past and whatever is pretty much rampant through every episode I listen to. So the first episode, she talks a lot about like her past relationships. And I also like looked her up and, you know, did some research. Um, And she has been married. I think this is her third or fourth official marriage, but fourth major relationship. And one of the marriages lasted a week. Like she literally was walking down the aisle like, I don't want to marry this guy. Uh, The first relationship. This makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. The first relationship was apparently super abusive. Like the guy, like, like criminally abusive. So like really bad. Um, And then she had two other relationships that were relatively short lived in the long run. Um, And I mean, it sounds like she has healthy relationships with at least one of her ex-husbands. And then there's this guy. And so just so you're aware, because I picked this up in the other episodes that I listened to, he is a former sex addict and has cheated on her multiple times. Ah, okay. So that's when he's talking about all the horrible things he's done. That's like where that's coming from. Um, So, and their marriage drama features frequently. I, again, I listened to three episodes and a little bit of the most current episode, and every single one dealt was like focused on their marriage drama and their different counseling sessions and their love language and et cetera, et cetera. And, and you know, that would be fine as like a podcast, like especially if, you know, let's say you're dealing with infidelity in a relationship and you're trying to solve for that and these people have lots of experience with it. So maybe you want to listen. But in the one that I don't want to be here right now, like they literally lead off into this super awkward, awful conversation. Like it's super fresh. She had just found out that he deleted some topless picture some woman had sent him on his phone the day before, like which just brought everything back from the prior times he was a cheater, which, you know, I could say a lot about this whole relationship. But um, at the very beginning of it, they're like, you know, well, we're giving our listeners some good stuff. I'm like, oh, like, it just made yeah. the whole thing very gross. I was just like, okay, so you're literally admitting that you're cashing in on your own relationship problems by broadcasting them to, on a podcast. Like, it's just yeah. super gross and cringy. And then they have, like, this producer who was on there who was, like, she was talking like she's a therapist. She's not, for the record. But she was, like, like Jana was saying something, and she was, like, to Michael, she's, like, you need to listen right now. She's really saying something very important right now. Like, oh, it was just, uh, well, yeah, I struggled. Well, it, I struggled. And the thing is, is that, it, that, and this blew my mind, it was like, people actually send in questions looking for advice of yes. these two people, which kind of just blew my mind. I mean, it, it's not like, it's serious life questions like, my daughter had an abortion the day after Christmas, what should I do? You know, it's like super like important life questions that they're asking about. And I'm like, these are the wrong people to be going to. This is like going to Reddit <laughs> asking for legal advice or relationship advice. It's just a terrible <laughs> idea. But apparently people yes. care enough about their opinions. Yes. And, and I mean, if you listen to them in the span of this podcast, he's already like not cheated, but they've already had issues recurring sex related issues in the span of them starting this podcast like they already had the history of it beforehand which they talk about in i think the second episode marriage uncorked where you know they talk about that stuff and and already in the second episode because the first episode was just her and her friend or producer i don't know who it was and and she was talking about her husband like not knowing when the kids have dentist appointments you know the whole being a mom thing and the husband not being as engaged and whatever. And of course, he had to come on the second episode. He was like, you were trash talking me on that episode. And so it's just, it's like watching a car crash, but not like even 
you know how they say you you can't look away from a car crash. Like you want to look away from this particular car crash. It's it's not pleasant to hear or to experience. Like I feel bad for both of them. Like they don't they shouldn't be in a relationship in my opinion. And and I agree like in multiple cases they were they were taking questions from fans or they were like giving advice on relationship stuff and I'm thinking I mean they have had a lot of therapy both of them and both couples therapy and individual therapy and love language therapy and just a long list of therapies and so they have a lot of experience with it but it doesn't seem to be working so well for them so I'm not sure I would uh be sending in notes like please give me advice on my relationship yeah and and one thing I noticed was that I, I feel like and maybe this could just be the product of the fact that he's cheated on her multiple times, but I definitely feel like that she may wear the pants in a relationship, in, in the relationship. Mm-hmm. And uh, one, of the, one of the exchanges they had, which I found interesting, was he was talking about, you know, he likes to play golf. And uh, her big thing is, like, if you're going to pay membership for the country club, you need to golf at least twice a month. And he's like, I try to, but you won't let me. And they get in this little argument. And then he calls this up. You know, after they're getting in this argument, he's like, I try to play at least twice a month, but you know, you don't, you complain every time I do. And then he goes, but you spend a thousand dollars a month on wine. And she goes, yeah, but I drink it all. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I'm like, what? I, I don't know if that's a, a good equivalent of saying you drink a thousand dollars of wine a month versus a guy who wants to play golf twice a month. Yeah, wine doesn't go bad. It's not like you're wasting the money if you buy all that wine and it sits in a, a cellar or something. That's hilarious. But, you know, and she could have said that jokingly. I didn't hear that episode, but uh, I do find that actually kind of funny. I don't think so. Well, I I think her response was kind of joking, but I felt like he was trying to get a sting on her and it just didn't, it didn't, it fell flat maybe. I don't know. It was, it was kind of, I don't know what they were doing and it made me uncomfortable (laughs) because I was like, this is a very real argument that they're actually having. I felt like. Oh, that's, that episode, I don't want to be here right now, is literally like her having a breakdown about this whole, you know, topless picture he received a text of and, and the fact that he deleted it. It wasn't so much that he got a random text, but it was that he did, he deleted it without telling her and that led into this whole, but it, it is so uncomfortable. It's like, this is something, this is a conversation the two of you should be having with a therapist or whatever, or a best friend or whoever. It's not for a podcast it just felt gross in the same way that like reality tv feels gross this felt gross like i shouldn't be hearing this and in fact that episode in particular was the hardest for me to listen to i'm sure there's some people who like get into the celebrity gossip stuff and was like oh this is just you know this is great you know but i did not enjoy it at all and and here's the crazy part so they have had some people on that they've interviewed and actually in the first episode they had a fan or a listener, she, she was a fan of Janice, who they called. Like, she had sub- she called in and said, or not called in, but she had, like, sent in a tweet or something, or an email, I think, and had said, hey, you know, I've gone through infidelity. I, you know, I've read on the love language thing. Like, you know, she had some really interesting perspective. And so they called her, and it was actually a really great discussion. Like, Jana listened, and she had really great input, and... It was actually a really cool exchange, A, because it's a fan and here, you know, she's actually reaching out to her, which was kind of cool. And they actually got to talk and Jana listened, like she listened and kind of engaged in the conversation. And it was, it was interesting. Like, you know, I was like, okay, that's not so bad. But that was after I'd listened to the episode where she was interviewing, and I honestly cannot remember the name, but it's some woman whose daughter, she used to be an actress on Dynasty. And her daughter got sucked into this sex cult. Um, oh, yes. Nexium. Uh, yeah. 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 And and so they spent, so the first 15 minutes of the podcast was this interview with her. And it was a train wreck. Like, Jana kept talking over her. Like, she wasn't, you could tell it was one of those interviews where she wasn't really listening to what the person was saying. She was just, like, waiting for her chance to talk. And she kept cutting her off. And before, like, Catherine could complete a thought or an answer to a question, she'd jump in with another question. It was just terrible. It was the worst interview I think I've ever heard. And I was like, it was a really fascinating topic. But it just sounded, like, super, I don't know. It was super awkward. And it only lasted, like, 15 minutes. And then after a myriad of ads again, then they dove into her and Mike talking about the whole, you know, topless text thing. And and the rest of the episode was that that drama. So... 
it was clear what the priority was. It was their right. personal drama, not this really potentially fascinating interview with someone whose daughter was in a sex cult, you know? So, right. right. Yeah. Well, and, and that's one thing I noticed is that the title of the episode is only about five minutes, five, 10, maybe, maybe 15 minutes of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Right. Like the man period episode. And I think the other one was, uh, it was about UFOs. Uh, we're not alone or something <laughs> like that, which I figured, okay, that, that one's gotta be, I, I want to see the galaxy brain takes here. And <laughs> they only, the, the name of the episode was only about 10 minutes each of, of the pod, and the podcast is an hour long. Right. Uh, roughly. And they literally talk about UFOs for 10 minutes. They talk about his man period for 10 minutes. That's it. And, <sighs> and, and they're just, and they don't really have any good witty banter with each other. Um, and it's just, uh, there is a chemistry problem there, which probably explains their marriage woes. Personally, that's that's my opinion. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I agree. Like they it, don't, they don't, they don't do a. Uh, yeah, I, there's just there is something there that doesn't work well with the two. Like they don't host a podcast well together. Right, right, and and what surprises me is that they actually have a fair number of sponsors in their podcast, and it's uh, not just like a you know an iHeartRadio commercial. It's them doing the sponsorship commercial. Right. And so that that was very surprising to me. And I looked at the episode list and there's actually quite a few interviews with celebrities on there. And, and you yeah. know, none of them are like big megastars. Like they're not going to get Tom Cruise or something on there, but it's like Lauren Pepperon <laughs> or whatever. So, you know, these kind of B, C tier celebrities, but still it's like, and maybe that's just the Hollywood connections and the NFL connections that they have or whatever. Um, I get them that. Yeah. But it's just like, so there is some popularity to this apparently, and I just I personally don't get it. But again, it all comes back to why are the the Kardashians famous? I, I just don't get it. I personally can't explain why people want to watch it. You know, exactly much like this why people would want to listen to it. Because again, if she was doing a podcast about musical theory of country music, different story, right? But it's like. If I want to listen to Matt Damon talk about, you know, his approach to writing Goodwill Hunting, I'm all over that. But I don't care about if he's going to talk about golfing at a country club. I, I just don't care. <laughs> well, and and speaking of the ads, I noticed, and I'm, this is just a general beef I have with any iHeart podcast. And yes, this is an iHeart Network podcast. So um, you get a, like the the one episode, and maybe it was because it was like one of their they knew it was going to be really popular because they were in the gossip columns about this particular issue. And this is the podcast where they were talking about it. But there was at least two, it was two at the beginning, two to three in every ad break, every 10 to 15 minutes. And most of them yeah. were just like Geico ads and Lexus ads and just like commercials. And iHeart's terrible for that. Like, yeah, I can't stand iHeartRadio if you can't well, tell because the way they insert ads is just awful and 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 i will say they do have some where they read them themselves like especially early on i noticed like episode one and two it was all like you know either hello fresh or whatever but they were doing their own ad reads which i i prefer like i prefer the podcast person like the podcast host actually doing their own ad reads and, and but it's just like some of them it's just it's as bad as like a watching a half hour sitcom where like t- you know 10 minutes of it is ads yeah, and I noticed that too. There was a lot of ads. At least the two I watched or listened to, there was. I felt most of it was them reading their own ads, which means that this company approached them to read the ad, uh, right. which tells me there's kind of a concentrated effort as opposed to, uh, you know, iHeart kind of curating like the Geico commercials or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that means they have some marketability to a degree, and that that's what I just I thought was kind of surprising. It doesn't surprise me a ton because to your point, that's, that is a market, right? Like there is, and, and scrolling through, this is how I found this app was, or this podcast was scrolling through my pocket cast app on Android, just scrolling through it and looking at the top, like, you know, I don't know, first few pages of ads that they show you. And I don't know if that's curated. I don't know if it's based on listenership. I have no idea, but it was in that first two page or two. Um, and just the name immediately, because it's spelled W-H-I-N-E, made me go, oh, this is probably something I'm not going to like. So <laughs> that's why I picked it. Um, but yeah, it's, there is a market for this kind of thing. And frankly, if you enjoy, and I'm not going to judge people who like this kind of material. I don't like it. But, you know, there are people who, they get done with work at the end of the day and they just want to watch trash. And they've told me, like I, one of my best friends, that's the only type of TV she watches. And she goes, I know it's trash, but that I don't care. I don't want anything serious. 
I want garbage to watch and just like revel in the the stupidity of whatever these celebrities are doing and you know and and so there's definitely a market for this type of podcast especially since they have so many issues which they just broadcast on this podcast so they have no compunction about talking about their sex life issues their the infidelity the trust issues you know everything else so they're definitely i think they know what they're doing and I'm not trying to downplay the authenticity of their feelings. Like I'm sure like in the episode, it was very raw. She was incredibly upset. Like she broke down in tears a few times. I don't think she was acting. I think that was real. Um, but it just felt gross to be listening in on that. I felt like I was listening on something I shouldn't because it was an actually real authentic, like awful moment in a marriage between a couple. And it's like, why am I listening to that? Right. And, and and I can respect the trash TV thing. I mean, I this is coming from someone who likes, you know, Jerry Bruckheimer movies. Right. And, right. and I know I know I'm not going to expect, you know, Oscar quality performances and stories and whatnot, but it's fun trash. I mean, Armageddon is by all measures a terrible movie, but it's extremely fun because it's just a trash movie. Right. And. I, I so I get that. Like my wife is very similar. She likes those shows, like you know, Southern Charm and Below Deck and uh, shows like yes, that because Below it is Deck trash. I've heard of. <laughs> yeah, and, and she she can just shut her brain off and watch it, which I I get it. You know, as as a gamer, uh, there are games where it's you can just kind of shut your brain off and you play kind of on autopilot in a way, and so I can appreciate that. But the, when you get to things like the Kardashians, there are people who actually legitimately follow the, all the news around the Kardashians. And actually care about the trends that they set and the things that they do. Like, there's an actual emotional investment in it. And if there's people who watch this stuff with because there's no emotional investment required, that's different than people who do actually have an emotional investment. And I think that's kind of where the whole celebrity culture thing gets a little out of control. Because I do think there is a large number of people who have that. And when it comes to stuff like this, uh, especially in reality TV, a lot of people don't realize a lot of it is actually scripted. Like a right. lot of the drama on the Kardashians, it, it's scripted, and uh, and this is widely known that it's scripted. And I'm almost to the point where I'm like, I come at this stuff at a, with a base level of skepticism because if you have somebody who wants to monetize their drama, then I'm immediately suspect uh, on their intentions. Right. And and I do think in this case. At least to me. And again, I could be naive because I don't follow a lot of that stuff and I don't have a lot of experience watching. I know that a lot of it is scripted, especially when you get into reality TV. But I do feel like this is not scripted. I feel like it's mostly authentic. I just think that they also are shrewd and know enough to know that this is the stuff that's going to get them a lot of clicks and listens is, you know, them talking about their very real drama. So I don't think they're acting. I don't think they're kind of making up stuff. I don't think it's officially scripted. But I do think they're well aware of the fact that they're going to, that if they talk about the really hard stuff in their marriage and the really ugly side of their marriage, that it's going to get them a whole lot more listening, people listening on their podcast. And so right. it, it to me, I don't know that that's any better. It's still pretty gross to me. <laughs> like that's it's the thing I don't like about reality TV. Um but I will say that I don't think that it's scripted or manufactured. It's, it didn't come across that way to me. Like, it felt fairly authentic. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that their relationship, if it is really authentic, I think they've got problems. I think their relationship is, uh, wow. Like, and it's not just, I mean, from episode one, which starts out with, you know, already exposing some relationship issues. And I did dip into the most recent episode which I guess is, it's been about two years. I didn't look at the dates, but I want to say it's about two years worth of podcast. And the most recent episode is again, and that's the other thing. Like if you look at the re- the descriptions of the episodes on, you know, whatever podcast app or, you know, they'll have like a description in the show notes. It's like, can their marriage survive this newest revelation? Oh, you Lord. know, it's just, it's it's written like an, a, a commercial for a reality TV series. So they know what they're doing. Again, I'm not saying it's not authentic, but they know what they're doing. Imagine how that divorce looks like. Where, how do you split the funds of monetizing 
marital drama. It's... <laughs> well, they did. Apparently, they did split up. I don't know if they officially divorced, but they did split up like pretty early on in their relationship, and then they got back together. And yeah, it's it's clearly not a healthy relationship. Which you know, I'm not there to judge their relationship. I'm judging their podcast, but their podcast is all about their relationship, so it's kind of it's kind of tied together. <laughs> It's kind of hard not to judge one, not the other. Right, exactly. Because they won't stop talking about it. And again, haven't listened to the whole series. I picked the top listen to episodes, which are probably the most, you know, salacious. But uh, based on what you picked at random, and then I also listened to the most recent episode. And I mean, you know, we're batting a thousand here. They're pretty much all about or all revealing their terrible relationship. Yeah, I agree with that. So I guess... Uh... Our rating is probably going to be pretty, uh, not going to be a surprise. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, this is, I definitely hate this podcast. Like, it was a struggle to get through the three episodes, and I am so happy I'm done with it. Yeah, and, you know, I I know some hyper-productive people listen to podcasts at, like, one and a quarter, one and a half, or two times speed, and I usually don't do that because I like just to actually listen at the regular speed, but I had to, I had to listen to this at a higher speed just so I could get through (laughs) it, so... And considering the fact I didn't finish the second episode, I hate this podcast. (laughs) All right. So there it is. We both hate it. Next up, we'll be looking at Park Predators. This is a true crime podcast. Uh, It's hosted by Delia D'Ambria. This is one of multiple podcasts she actually uh, uh, host, um, but this one I discovered when we were actually on a long road trip, and it is true crime, which uh, me and my wife do love true crime podcasts. I think that's probably most people love as uh, true crime because I think that's probably the most popular genre. Uh, she is a uh, investigative journalist from North Carolina, and she uh, has this series, Park Predators, which talks about uh, cases, murder cases that happen in national parks, which seems to be pretty niche little subject but i it's actually pretty interesting uh so i I've, I've listened to all the episodes before uh and i've you know a couple of them i've even listened to a, a couple of times but uh i've just recently introduced you to this so what do you think from your first uh, uh listen yeah i was kind of shocked there's been that many murders in national parks if i'm honest <laughs> I, I <laughs> for that to be the topic of a podcast i was like wow that's sort of scary um yeah, so I, I like true crime podcasts. I only have a couple in my regular rotation. This was not one of them, but I was all on board to check it out. And um, the first thing that jumped out at me, if I'm honest, is the sound design. Like, holy cow. So I listen to podcasts, like I said, while I'm cleaning the house. You know, sometimes if I'm working on something kind of tedious, I can I can listen to a podcast. Um, but I also listen to them when I walk my dog. And I walk my dog three times a day, a uh, mile each time. And the first walk is early morning, like pre-dawn. It's pretty dark out and they insert she inserts these like really kind of lush kind of background soundscapes that are relevant to whatever she's talking about so if it's snowing you can hear sort of wind and and or you might hear trees rustling and I was walking the first time I was listening to this and I thought the sounds I was hearing was just around me like the trees rustling and stuff and then there was a, a sound of a car inside the podcast like in the sound design and I like turned around. I thought a car was coming down the street. And then I paused it and realized all that sound I'd been hearing was just on the podcast. So it's it's really well done. It's behind her audio track. So you, you can still hear her. It doesn't sound like like it's drowning her out. But the sound design just kind of blows me away. So I have to call that out right off the bat because it's, it's really pleasant to listen to. Um, yeah. And honestly, it kind of creeped me out a few times when I was walking in those early morning walks listening to these. It was like, and I don't normally get creeped out by true crime podcasts. So I was like, this is really well done. Yeah, yeah. And and just kind of piggyback on that. One of the things I, I I'm not a big fan of podcasts that kind of go off like a radio play in a way mm-hmm. where they add in sound effects like doors opening and closing and footsteps, stuff like that. I just for some reason, it just I don't know, bothers me. But uh, this is it's a very subtle background noise and you know, it's there, but it's not distracting. Yes, it's so subtle that I literally just thought it was outside of my headphones like you know, it was it was my real world around me. So it's, it's really well done. Um, but aside from that, I really I thought 
at first I was like, I don't know, this is a single person narrator. There's nobody else talking. I thought I might get kind of bored with it, but I really didn't because she's, I don't know if it's how, how she narrates it or how she, it is clearly, you know, she's got a script that she's going off of, but the way she narrates it, like she sounds very interested in it. I guess the mm-hmm. way it like, like she's, yeah. I did do some research. She's a uh, TV journalist or she has been a TV journalist before, like on screen TV journalist. So um, she's really good at kind of talking about it in a way that, that sounds like she's actually interested, you know, like she's telling you, it's like she's sharing this really interesting story with you. Like, can you believe this happened? Um, so that, that was kind of cool. Like, I really like the way she presents it. Her, her cadence is really, really strong. Right. It, 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 to me, it almost feels like somebody giving a TED talk. Like she's talking to a crowd about something she's passionate about. Yes. And that's kind of what it sounds like. And and so like whenever they reveal like a new piece of evidence, she's like super engaged. Like, isn't that fantastic or isn't that super interesting? It's like that tone of voice. Uh, so that way there's almost like an emphasis to the listener. Like, oh, wow, a new piece of evidence that came through that might solve the case. And so she's incredibly engaging in that way because she's not just kind of reading, like I said, just from a script, but it's almost like she's narrating it to, to uh, well, it's it's kind of hard to describe. Like I said, I, I guess TED Talk is probably the best way of describing it. It's just like there's a crowd in front of her and she's interacting with that crowd. Yes. Uh, which, I mean, technically that's what a podcast is, but if someone was on a TED Talk stage kind of giving the same kind of, you know, uh, speech, it would sound very similar to how she's engaging. Yeah, that's a good analogy because it is very like, Again, and, and and you can do that and sound super dramatic and overly done, right? Like it's possible to to do that, but it it comes across as forced. But it sounds like she's she's truly interested. Like like you know, she'll be talking about and 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 his car didn't have any evidence in it, but yet you know, like the way she does it, it just feels like she is super engaged into it. And I think that kind of draws in the listener because at first, like I said, I you know. I love true crime podcasts, but a lot of them are just like one person talking about the podcast. And sometimes that sounds, it becomes monotonous or kind of droning or kind of boring, frankly. Um, and so it's all kind of on the host and how they present it. And she does a really good job. Like I, I was super impressed with her delivery and how she, she drew me in. Cause these are, and, and that's another thing I should point out. These are cases I had never heard of and having, like I said, I'm not a, like, I only have a couple of true crime podcasts in my rotation, but I have several other podcasts that will also cover true crime in addition to other topics. And so I've heard, you know, there's multiple serial killers that I've heard multiple different episodes of different podcasts on, right? You know, but these are all cases I've never heard of. And like I said, I didn't realize that murder happens that frequently in national parks. So um, it was it was really engaging. I was I was kind of impressed. Yeah, and, and the pacing of the, each episode is really good too. Like, she's she can call out certain things for the listener to take note of without calling out that that's going to be important later. So she's very good at kind of circling back to earlier evidence, you know, and kind of making a complete picture. So the the actual writing and pacing of each episode is actually really good. Uh, and that that was one of the things I really uh, liked about it was that. Once I started listening to it, I was like, you need to kind of listen to every single thing she's talking about because she's going to circle back to that at some point. And you always wonder, I wonder how that's going to play in the end. You know, how 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 is this small little detail that she specifically called out that's going to play an important part at the end? And it's you're kind of interested to wait to see how that all plays out. Yeah, and that really speaks to her her skill as a storyteller, because she doesn't she doesn't waste space in the podcast like and and some sometimes podcasters will do that to kind of draw drag something out to make the episode longer or to make it into a series and she doesn't do that if she's if she mentions it then it's important and the other thing she does that i really like is she spends time focused on the victims she doesn't just the victims aren't just like there to be a victim in the story she'll talk about their families and mm-hmm. about you know their personalities and the things that they liked and the things that they did and so she spends a lot of time talking about the victims as well which i think a lot of true crime podcasts forget to do because they're right. so focused on the the grisly nature of the crime but she does a really good job of of contextualizing the tragedy so you know it might just be one person that's killed by this particular person um, that they're, you know, going after. 
But it's really nice that she spends time making you understand who that person who died or who went missing, you know, who they were and why it matters and why it's a tragedy. And so she does it in a way that doesn't feel contrived. Um, right. And so I, I really kind of respected that. And honestly, her being a journalist and coming from on TV journalism, I kind of expected the opposite. Like, because I did some research on her before I started the podcast, and I kind of expected her to, you know, over dramatize and and you know, kind of be more focused on the more salacious aspect aspects of the crimes. But she really isn't. Like she, no. she keeps it to the evidence. She keeps it to what the investigators are able to find, and she does spend time talking about the victims. Yeah, it, and that's one thing I do like about her podcast is that once it starts, it starts. There's not, you know, a, a huge preamble and introduction. It's really no frills, but yet she still keeps it engaging, uh, even though she's removed all this this kind of frills. And it's just kind of, I don't want to say no nonsense, but it's it, it just starts off from the go. It's one episode. And each in each episode is one murder case, so there's not like this huge series because that's one thing I noticed about a lot of true crime podcasts. It's usually like a series of like ten episodes talking about one case, right? Whereas this, it's like little snippets. You get one case per episode, so you can listen to it without having to have this huge commitment of some long series like Dirty John or something like that, right? So, right. and that's what I appreciate is that she just once the podcast starts, she gets. There may be a slight introduction to just kind of set the setting, but it's no more than a few minutes. And then it's just she hits the ground running with it all the way through the end. And so that's one thing I appreciate about that is because I a lot of preamble, a lot of banter. Usually if there's like co-hosts, which there's not on this one, but there's a lot of podcasts that may have a specific subject like true crime or something. But there may be some banter between the two co-hosts before they get into it. Or some drawn out introduction. I'm like, okay, can we just start with the story, please? And that's one thing I liked about this is that she just gets right into the story pretty quick into each episode. Yeah. And okay, so this is a side note, but I did make a point to note this down. Um, she and it it might. So I, I should point out that this is part of a network, a small kind of independent network. It sounds like called Audio Chuck, and. Um, Apparently, that that's because the founders of the network, they have a dog named Chuck. And so at the end of each episode, she asks Chuck what he thinks. And, you know, he makes this like kind of sound. And I'm a huge dog lover. And I noticed that in the episodes that featured dogs, and it's not a big thing. You might not even notice it if you weren't paying attention. But she makes sure to let you know what happened to the dogs. Because there's a couple of instances where people were like <laughs> hiking with their dogs. And I'm one of those people like, because the person goes missing and you're like, and you're like, but what about the dog? What happened to the dog? Like That's important <laughs> to me. And so, um, and I've noticed that she always makes sure to point out what happened to the dog. Like, you know, whether it, in most, in most of the ones I think um, they were, the dog was found, you know, wandering around or whatever. But um, I was so happy about that. Cause if, if I, I think the very first episode I listened to, which is, the, I, I listened to them in order. So it was the first episode. If, if she had not like closed the loop on what happened to the dog, I'd have been like, I'm done with this podcast, <laughs> if I'm honest. Yeah, no. And, and, and to speak of that, I mean, there, I did listen to some of her other podcasts. I, I know there's at least two of them. One she has a co-host with, which uh, there's a lot of banter on that. And it's kind of like an ongoing series. So it's kind of, you, you kind of need to know how their chemistry works, I guess, to appreciate their banter, which uh, I just wasn't into. But she has another one, which is like, Kind of like an unsolved mysteries kind of thing. Is it the clock? And, what is it called? Like something clock or I can't remember it, the name it of it. May, I don't. I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look. It may not be in that one. She may even have okay. a, that. May even be a fourth one. Okay. Um, but it, and I only listened to one episode, which was about <laughs> MK Ultra. So if any oh, JRE nice. listeners with uh, Mike Baker, they probably know about Midnight Climax and stuff. And yeah, that kind of heavily was in one episode which was actually really interesting as well i, I do want to listen to more of that series uh, maybe something we cover in the future uh but she seems to be pretty busy with other podcasts so uh and considering her style you know i if i see that she's doing a specific podcast i may actually want to listen to it because it, it's it, because it is her yeah that's a really good point because i i that's how I've found other podcasts in the past. Like I'll listen to one and if I find out that that person has another podcast and I like their current, you know, like it, sometimes the host is agnostic to how I, you know, how I feel about the podcast is not all about the host. It's more about the topic or whatever. But in this case, I agree. She's 
like I actually because I went to her social media and it was all about because right now I think she's had some recent episodes of her other podcast, which is driving me crazy with the name of it. Is it something to do with clock? But it's a um, it's actually an active investigation. Like she's investigating an unsolved crime type of thing. And um, it sounds really interesting. And because I like how she presents things in Park Predators, it makes me think that that would be one that I'd be willing to check out. So, yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll dig into some of those in a future episode. Yeah, and, you know, as far as true crime podcasts go, a lot of them, it's kind of, they, they seem more self-serving in a weird sort of way, or it's, maybe that's the wrong thing, where it's more or less the person who's doing the podcast is a character of the story, in a way, mm-hmm. uh, this non-fictional story, and obviously she's just reciting some because some of these cases are pretty old. I think one of these took place like in the seventies. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. And so, but it's not it, it it's not like a self insert. Like I'm currently investigating this, even though she does have that one series like that. And I find those kind of podcasts to be those kind of true crime podcasts to be uh, somewhat annoying for a reason I can't really put my finger on yet. And maybe it's just based on whoever the journal investigative journalist is. So I think that's one of the things I appreciate about this is just it's almost like watching. You know, like a missing person drama on A and E or something that is just, you know, you just don't have the cheesy reenactments that they usually have on those. Right. Uh, so and that's those are just fun to watch. Yeah, and and I do like. There's something to be said for true crime podcasts where there's a shtick, like one of one of the ones that I I really like and listen to. I wouldn't call it a true crime podcast because it's true crime plus UFOs plus cryptids plus conspiracies like it's kind of all over the place but they have a particular delivery style that because their their background is comedy so they they kind of I wouldn't say they insert themselves into it but they definitely put their style and their spin on it which is very different from something like this where it's like like here's the facts and the information told in an engaging way but there's no you know there's no spin on it there's no uh a shtick you know about like and and honestly at first i thought well maybe this will make this kind of dull but it's really not because again i think the host is fantastic the way she presents it's really really good and that sound design like i can't get over the sound design it's so subtle and it just gives an ambiance and i'm not usually one to because again most of the time when you experience that it's very forced like you said if somebody's got like a creaking door in the background or footsteps or whatever it sounds kind of cheesy and and it, and it it'll come across as overdone but in this one it's just a kind of background very light ambiance that that makes you feel like you're outside or you're hearing something in the distance it's very well done very subtly done and that combined with her kind of engaging storytelling method makes it something that's it's both relaxing and also creepy to listen to <laughs> now i know it's part of the audio chuck network and i know some podcast uh, sites have where when they say, oh, well, we do episodes weekly, but people who are subscribed to our network will get it a couple days early. I, I don't know a lot about Audio Chuck, uh, if they have something similar to that. So, and I'm not familiar, other than Park Predators, I'm actually not familiar with Audio Chuck uh, as a whole, but uh, that's probably one thing to consider. Because I'm, I'm realizing now that I'm getting more and more into podcasts, that there is a lot of those kind of services. And oh, that, yeah. It, it, to me, it's kind of annoying because I was on a road trip recently and we were listening to one and we got to the end and technically it was released, but we didn't want to pay money for this network just so we can get to the last episode. Right. Yeah. And that is that is a really common setup. Like I've I've got a couple of podcasts I listen to that have their own network. Um, it's not a big conglomerate. You know, it's it's artist owned, that kind of thing. Um, there's I think the most famous or most kind of widely known one is probably um radiotopia which has like some of the most major pot like 99 percent invisible and criminal and some of the really big name podcasts under their umbrella but they have their they have their own network they have their own funding drive it's kind of very public radio in that way where they do a funding drive each year um maximum fun is another one so there's there's definitely networks like that i have listened to almost all of the park predators episodes there's not that many i mean it's a relatively new and the pet and the episodes all run pretty much less than an hour so you can kind of binge listen through the the back catalog um and i haven't heard any reference to that so my assumption is if it's something if they have something like that it's probably like in my experience it's been like a once a year thing so it's a it's a possibility but okay 
Um, but it's it's pretty non-invasive as far as other than the kind of sting at the end where they mention audio chuck. I, I it's a little less invasive than some of the other podcasts I've listened to where it might be more, you know, mentioned more often or um, again, could be just I haven't heard any episodes where they're having a, a fund drive, which at that time it tends to be like every single episode will bring it up. <laughs> um, right. yeah. which, yeah. you know, I don't I don't fault them for that. It's a different type of way of monetizing podcasts and it's a different uh, strategy it's a little more like patreon except that it's you know their own kind of funding process so you know it it works they usually have perks that you can't get if you're not you know contributing um but that's true of patreons as well so all right so as far as ratings go i personally i i i, I don't hate this podcast i really enjoy it and uh we'll look forward to future episodes uh add it to my regular rotation yeah, I'll be honest, I went in thinking the one, this one might be one that I might hate, but I really don't. I really like it, and um, I, I'm i going to finish listening through the back catalog, that's for sure, and I'll probably stay subscribed. Have thoughts you want to share? Send us an email at whyihateyourpodcast at gmail.com, or visit our website at whyihateyourpodcast.com. You can also find us at Hate Your Podcast on Twitter and Instagram. Our intro, transition, and outro music is by Kevin McLeod and licensed under Creative Commons. Please see the show notes for details. 